This video is a review of piecewise functions. When evaluating functions using function notation, plug the x value given into the appropriate function. Make sure you check the restrictions on x to determine which function to use. So we're going to evaluate the following for f of x. So remember this is function notation f of x equals 2x minus 4 strictly for x values that are greater than 2. It equals 2x squared strictly for x values that are less than or equal to 2. So this first one where the x value is negative 1. Well this one's for values greater than 2, less than or equal to 2. So I have to use the second one. 2x squared. So I'm going to plug, plug negative 1 in for x. So we have 2 times x is negative 1 squared. Using order of operations, I have to do exponents before I multiply. So I have 2 times negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, now we have f of 2. So where x is 2, well this one's x value is strictly greater than 2, does not include 2. The bottom one, x value is less than or equal to 2. The or equal tells us it does include 2. So we have to use 2x squared again. So we have 2 times x is now 2 squared. Word of operations, 2 squared is 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, now x values that f of x, x value is 4. So I have to use a top one because this is for x values greater than 2. 2x minus 4. So 2 times our x value of 4 minus 4. 2 times 4 is 8. And 8 minus 4 gives us 4. All right, here is your function notation problem that you're going to try. Go ahead and pause the video here. Come back when you're ready for the answers. All right, so you have three different options to choose from, so you have to make sure you're paying attention to the restrictions. So this one's for x values less than or equal to 1. This one's for x values that are greater than 1, but less than or equal to 3. Last one, x values that are greater than 3. So negative, one, negative 3 falls into the values that are less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to use this first one. So I have 4 times the x value, which is negative 3, plus 1. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 1 gives me negative 11. Okay, f of 3. 3 is in this middle one because this is x values that are less than or equal to 3. So I have to use the absolute value of x minus 2. Absolute value of x is 3 minus 2. Order of operations, do what's inside first. 3 minus 2 is 1, and the absolute value of 1 is 1. f of 5. I'm going to use the last one because this is for x values greater than 3. So we have 3x squared, 3 times 5 squared, Order of operations, you have to square, do exponents first, so we're going to square the 5. So we have 3 times 25, and 3 times 25 is 75. Okay, so they're called piecewise functions because there's different pieces or different parts of the function. So just a quick um, introduction to different types, continuous, continuous and discontinuous. A continuous function is a single unbroken curve or straight line. A discontinu func discontinuous function is broken in some way, such as having a hole. If you have strictly less than or greater than, but not equal to a point, then you will have a hole. A jump between points would be discontinuous or a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we're going to graph some piecewise functions. Okay, so let's start with this one. We have two different pieces that we need to graph. I'm going to use a separate sheet of paper 
and I'm going to create a table. So the first one, f of x equals 3 for x values that are less than 2. So if it's less than on a graph, it's going to be an open circle because it does not include the point. If it's equal to or equal to down here, so this one's greater than or equal to, or if it's less than or equal to, it's a closed circle. Okay, so for the first one, I'm going to pick x values to get y out. I know I need to include the point where x is 2. Since this x value is less than 2, let's also see what it would be when x is 1. Okay, well when x is 2, well there's nowhere I can plug in any x value, so I'm just left with 3. Again, when x is 1, I can't plug in x because, well, it's just 3, so my answer is still 3. And again, I said when x is 2, it's going to be an open circle because it's strictly less than. So I'm going to graph this. When x is 2, y is 3, and it's an open circle. When x is 1, y is also 3, and it's going to continue in the less than direction. So it's just a horizontal line through y equals 3. Okay, our next one, f of x equals x plus 2 for x values that are greater than or equal to 2. So again, when we create our table to figure out points, we need to include where x is 2. And because it's greater than or equal to, it'll be a solid circle at this point because it does include it. Uh, values greater, how about we choose 3? So I'm going, going to plug in 2 for x. 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Plug in 3. 3 plus 2, 5. I'm going to graph these. Again, close circle where x is 2. x is 2, y is 4. Next point when x is 3, y is 5, and that's just going to continue going up because it's all x values that are greater than or equal to 2. Okay, here's my graph. So again, piecewise because there were two pieces, two parts of the graph. Okay, and one more. This one actually has three parts. So we're going to graph each individually. Okay, first one, I know negative 2x squared, this is for x values that are less than or equal to 1. So I have to know what the graph's going to look like when x is 1. And it's or equal to, so it's going to be a solid circle at this point. Less than or equal to, so I need at least one more point. I'm going to choose 0. And let's choo also choose negative 1 because this is um, a quadratic, so it is U-shaped. So let's figure out what's happening. So when x is 1, 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Plug in 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 times negative 2 is 0. Plug in negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So I'm going to graph this. When x is 1, y is negative 2, and that's a solid circle. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is negative 1, y is negative 2. And it's going to continue that direction. Because remember, it's x values that are less than or equal to 1. So it's continuing this direction. And then let's see what it looks like for our middle one. This is an absolute value function in the middle. So we have x and y. Okay, remember absolute value functions are v-shaped and you can figure out um, the point of the v, the vertex, by figuring out what would make it be zero on the inside. Well, I know that negative 2 plus 2 would give me 0, and to make this negative 2, x would have to be 2, which is right in between. So I know I will have that vertex. So I need to include as one of my points where x is 2, but well, my two endpoints, 
x values that are greater than 1, so strictly greater than is an open circle. Again, I said I'd have where x is 2. And x values that are strictly less than or equal to 3. So 3 is another point, and this is closed because it's or equal to. Okay, so where x is 1, let's figure it out, plug in 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. Plug in 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Plug in 3. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So let's graph. When x is 1, y is 1, and this is open. When x is 2, y is 0. And when x is 3, y is 1. And that one's closed. So it is going to be a V shape. Okay, last piece of the graph. We have the function f of x equals 5x minus 10. Okay, so this is linear, so I do know it's going to be a straight line. So I need at least two points. One point I need to know, x is greater than 3. So at 3, I have to know where my graph's going to be. It's strictly greater than, so it's an open circle. Um, another value greater than 3 is 4. So I'm going to use these points, plug in 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus 10 gives me 5. Plug in 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus 10 is 10. So when I graph, when x is 3, y is 5. And this is open. When x is 4, y is 10, and my graph is just going to continue in that direction. Okay. Here are two problems for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video here. Come back when you're ready, and I will give you the answers. Okay, so the first one. We have f of x equals 5. Well, we know it's going to be a horizontal line. So I need to know x value is strictly greater than 4. I can create a table if I'd like. So we have x and y strictly greater than 4. So I can do 4 and 5. And I know it's an open circle at 4. Well, no matter what I plug in for x, my answer is always going to be 5. So when x is 4, y is 5, again, open circle. When x is 5, y is 5, and it, my graph's going to continue in that direction. Okay, then we have 2x minus 3 for x values less than or equal to 4. So I need to know what my graph looks like at 4. Or equal to means solid circle. And because it is less than or equal to, I'm also going to choose 3. Okay, I'm going to plug in 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. Plug in 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. So when x is 4, y is 5. And it actually fills in the center of that circle that was open from the one before. When x is 3, y is 3, and my graph's going to continue going down because this is for x values less than or equal to 4, so it's going to keep going. Okay, and last one. Okay, first one, quadratic. We have x squared plus 1 for x values that are less than or equal to 2. So I need to choose 2, and let's also choose 1, x values that are less than. Okay, We can choose a couple more if you'd like. We can choose 0, just figure out what's happening. Okay, so plug in 2. 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. 
Plug in 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Plug in 0. 0 squared is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So when x is 2, y is 5. And this is closed. Something I need to make sure I remember is put either open or closed. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 0, y is 1. Looks like my graph's slowing down. So let's try another one. Negative 1. When x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So when x is negative 1, y is 2. So now my graph's going to go up. So I know my graph's going to continue this direction. Okay, let's try the middle one. Absolute value, so it is V-shaped. I need to see if I'm going to have both sides of the V, so I need to find where the vertex is, which the vertex will be where it's zero inside the absolute value bars. Well, X would have to be five, because five minus five gives us zero. And five is right on the edge of this, and so I'm only going to have half of my V. So I need to at least know where X is two, and where x is 5, because I won't have the other half of my v. So this is x values that are greater than 2, so it's open circle. x values less than or equal to 5, so closed. So when x is 2, 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Plug in 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Graph those. When x is 2, y is 3. An open circle. When x is 5, y is 0. That one's closed. Go ahead and connect those. And we have one more. And that one's linear. It's a straight line. So we have x values. One value I need to include is 5. And these are x values greater than 5. So it's open at 5. Value greater would be 6. Plug them in. When x is 5, we have negative 5 plus 4 gives us negative 1. Plug in 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So when x is 5, y is negative 1. Again, open circle. When x is 6, y is negative 2. And that graph's going to continue going down because it's x values that are greater than 5. So this video was a review of graphing piecewise functions.